So if you could tell, if you could please tell us your name, where you come from, and what you do. Yeah. Start I'm Bunny. Uh, I currently live in Singapore, and uh, right now I'm just uh, sort of a freelance hacker, roaming the world and building hardware, doing that sort of stuff, helping people, advising companies, bits and pieces. Um, we're then curious to hear what is um, a particular project or an idea that inspires you most right now? Okay. Um, there's a couple of uh, projects I'm uh, pretty actively engaged with right now. Um, one of them I'm looking at doing right now is are these uh, sort of, um, we call them circuit stickers. They're uh, basically electronics that are put onto flexible PCBs that you can then stick onto copper tape to make circuits with no solder. And um, the idea is that it helps expand the medium of technology that's available to makers. Traditionally, makers have been more bound to sort of rigid PCBs, um, and they, they, they don't sort of impedance match as well with a lot of other me media, like paper, fabric, you know, curved surfaces. Um, and it's also a much higher bar of entry to build circuits using these types of devices. So these stickers, the idea is that we go ahead and we put circuit primitives onto stickers and you can lay down copper tape or aluminum foil and then stick them together and build um, you know relatively simple but still meaningful circuits out of these primitives um, that's a that's something that's actually a research project I'm working on with a student at the MIT Media Lab right now Chi, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm, I'm very excited about that uh, another thing that's got me really excited right now is I'm looking at um, building my own laptop so uh, I've always wanted to just build my own laptop ever since I was sort of, well, computer as it may be, as when I was a very young kid. I uh, wanted to just, like, build it not in a sense of putting together motherboard together and cables, but actually design the motherboard and design all the circuits and make it exactly as I want to make it. And so uh, it's kind of as a hobby of mine in the background, I've been sort of uh, designing this, like, sort of full-blown laptop motherboard and system that goes around it and we're getting pretty close to having a thing that actually starts to look like a laptop now wow. yeah Exciting. yeah um, so if you had um, one million dollars to fund a project at the maker carnival today yeah which one would that be that's a that's a tough question because uh, I mean I, I took a, a quick walk around the carnival grounds and had a look at it there's a lot of really interesting things going on down there um, yeah, I, th I, I think that it, you know, it may not be like a project in particular, but I, I kind of like the, the whole kind of community aspect that this is starting to build here. I think that the money would be really well, really well spent in sort of trying to, f you know, fund like more hacker spaces and more general community order things, not necessarily like a particular idea or class of things there. Um, there's some pretty cool stuff down there. Like I saw this, this guy built like this little Arduino board with an A10 all winter on it, right? Really, really powerful kind of thing. And that has like a lot of promise to be turned into other kinds of like PCs and products for, you know, people in developing countries and that sort of thing. So there's some interesting um, outgrowths that like you wouldn't see, for example, in, in, um, in like the a Maker Faire in the US, that level of sophistic sophistication probably wouldn't be around, right? Most people would first do a Kickstarter to even get to that point or, or want to raise a lot of money. Here it's sort of like this little booth, this guy, hey, I, I built this powerful arm system and it's on a uh, you know, Arduino board and, and you know, very little fanfare for that kind of level of technology, which is surprising. Wow, that was great. Um, can you make one prediction about the technology of tomorrow? Right. Uh, technology of tomorrow, I guess <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple couple ways to look at it. I guess, I guess the more the, 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 the answer I, use, I typically give is that um, technology as we have known it within the span of most people's lives uh, who, who are alive today has been in this phase of rapid growth through Moore's Law. It's always been doubling and, and we throw away our phones every two years. We get new computers every two years and it was faster and better. Um, Tomorrow, and it's almost very literally becoming tomorrow. It used to be tomorrow as in like within a few years, but now it's almost like tomorrow. Uh, that's not going to be the case, right? Um, you're not going to be able to go into the store and buy a computer that's twice as good as what you have today. It's definitely not going to be twice, fa twice as fast. Um, the phones may not get substantially more powerful. Um, it's, and, and, what, and that's going to change the way people innovate. It used to be that 
if you spent a lot of time optimizing your code for a particular platform, you were wasting your time because a new platform would arrive within two years and, and someone w could just beat you doing almost nothing because, because they just had so much more power, raw power available. Now it's going to, there's more opportunity for people to optimize and uh, spend time with like platforms that will stay more stable over a longer period of time. Um, well, our second to last question is, technology and entrepreneurship both have, are often targeted towards solving a particular world's problem, mm -hmm. or societal problem. Yep. If you could make anything, what problem would you want to solve? This is a hard question. There's <laughs> so a lot of things I want to make and a lot of problems I want to solve. Um, and there's a lot of problems in the world, right? Uh, I mean, if you look really globally, there's, there's, there's a lot of the world that doesn't have access to just clean water, food, stability. Um, so even, even before, I mean, I was just talking today to someone like, you know, one place where like the old PC project kind of failed is that we're giving laptops to people who don't have running water, right? It seems like we've, we're, we've got things backwards from a social agenda standpoint, right? So the, the question you have is huge in scope. Right, like if we could solve the energy problem, right, somehow, that would be a great thing to build. I don't have a particular answer to it, right? Um, but I mean, if we were to limit it more, say, if we had problems that we want to look at within the develop, developed world, right, you know, first kind of first world nations, there's a whole class of areas there, particularly around medical technology, they're very interesting to me. So, so I kind of, kind of have it as a hobby of mine looking at a lot of the, um, you know, uh, so bioelectronics. Um, there's really interesting work going on right now in uh, prostheses, sequencing of genetic material, um, automation of that, home health care, elderly health care, which is going to be a big problem coming up. Um, and, uh, and generally, in this whole area where you're bringing technology closer to humans, not just sort of from like the digital self and wearable kind of trend, but actually like very meaningful health improvements and benefits uh, coming from technology, I think will be interesting and have a, a, a positive long-term impact for people who have already access to technology. Of course, as I said, like if you don't have electricity or running water, there's a different class of problems we need to really work on and solve for them. Great. Um, so our, our last question is somewhat more open-ended. And it's about, um, we wanted you to, to hear a little bit more from you about your engagement with China. Yeah, my engagement with China. So, um, I mean, at the at the moment, so I live in Singapore at the moment, and part of the reason I moved from where I was born in the United States to to Singapore was to get closer to China. Um, uh, pretty much all of my manufacturing operations, sourcing operations, um, and a lot of my sort of you know design management and so forth happens in the China ecosystem, uh, particularly around Shenzhen. So, uh, you know, I come to, to Shenzhen at least once a month. I work with uh, partners there. Um, I uh, work with startups there. And, uh, and I really enjoy that ecosystem. It feels very alive and very energetic. I draw a lot of inspiration from it. Um, and so I, I would say that, you know, I have a lot of engagement in that particular area with people in China. So. No, that's fantastic. I was just curious if you wanted to talk about it. Like we're gonna cut my part out anyway. Yeah. But um, also the because you have been working with the MIT also and doing these educational. Yeah, yeah. China, right? Right, yeah. right, right. <coughs> yeah, there, there is also an aspect of um, uh, you know, there, there is kind of trying to bring, trying to bridge the gap between East and West, mm -hmm. right? So um, I am a, a research affiliate with the Media Lab, mm -hmm. and one of the things I've been trying to do is to to arrange for deeper collaboration between the research ecosystem in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and the uh, innovation ecosystem in Shenzhen. Um, there is a, there is a it's, a, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a difficult task because research runs at a very different pace and different scale than, than the kind of manufacturing and innovation mm -hmm. happens out here. So, you know, when you get a quotation, you know, out here, you expect to have an order placed within, you know, at most a month or something like that. And research, it may be a semester where they where they think about a whole mm -hmm. like six months where they they ponder the issue and redesign and tweak things to make them better because they're they're really pushing something pretty aggressive and pretty far out there. So they can't just make a decision right away. A lot of it is uh, very explorative in nature, 
And so trying to bridge the gap between the culture, you know, the, the very business-oriented culture out here and the very research-oriented culture that exists um, out there is, is an interesting challenge. And um, trying to foster more understanding between the two, I think, has been, been fruitful and interesting. Great. Well, thank you so much.